Well, it's that time again. Time to have some fun with a clay ballistics video. I know I did this about three years ago and then I did a second one about two years ago. But times are changing really quick. And um, back then, the impact was maxing out at like 55 foot pounds. Today, I've got my M3 here that's shooting at 90 foot pounds. And I've got that PTE 220 shooting 22 kill slugs at 100 foot pounds or just over 100 foot pounds. So we have to revisit this video. It's just, I'm just really curious to see what happens. We're going to start with a baseline test at sub 12 foot pounds from a Springer, work our way up through various different guns, various different pellets and slugs. Um, it should be really interesting. We're in a new section of the farm today and um, that I haven't been to in many, many years. It's been recently cleared by uh, woodcutters and it's nice and sheltered here. So there's a bit of wind, but it shouldn't affect us today. Let's get straight to it and see what happens. So this is how this is going to work. I'm going to be standing or shooting from my truck back there. And we've got the clay about 20 meters away on a table here. And you get a rough idea of the size of this block of clay. There's my hand. This is not by any means uh, a test that's going to tell you how those slugs are going to perform on uh, on animals because it's a totally different ball game. Just because a slug expands in clay doesn't mean it's going to expand in an animal. In fact, I've had solid slugs expanding in, in clay that I know for a fact don't expand in, in animals or in water, even if fired at point blank. So this is just for fun. Don't take this as a scientific uh, uh, analysis of, of what that wound channel can look like in an animal, but it does give you a very good idea of how much energy is being dumped and how much penetration you're going to get because yeah, you can see how much clay is displaced and you need a lot of energy to displace dense material like that. So it should be interesting. Let's get to it. So we're going to start um, right at the low end of the spectrum with a very beautiful very well made uh, Springer. This is the uh, Air Arms TX200 Hunter Carbine, very well known. It's only shooting at just under 12 foot pounds of muzzle energy, which is not much, but it's going to act as a good baseline. So, this is what basically most people in the UK are shooting. Um, most kids grow up with little Springers like this. This one is in 22 caliber, but as I said, we still ha only have that sub 12 foot pounds of muzzle energy. But let's see how it does. Should be very interesting. Little 16 grand pellet, actually, last time I tested this gun, penetrated really well. It didn't dump a lot of energy, but it penetrated well. So, let's do this. Okay. Good shot. Let's go take a look. So, there we go. Sub 12 foot pound, not bad at all. Look at the penetration there. It's about from my pinky to my thumb if I do a little shaka sign there. <laughs> and there's our pellet. Just get this out here. Still facing forward. And if you look closely, it's pretty much intact. You can even see the rifling marks there. So the wound cavity at its thickest point is about three centimeters. And this whole thing is about, about 20 centimeters long. Not bad. Our next um, air gun is a PCP. Um, this is the Wildcat Mark III. It's, I think it's shooting at about 33 or 34 foot pounds with uh, 16 grain JSB. So we're shooting the same pellets as we did with the Springer, but we've pretty much doubled in power. So it should be pretty interesting to see what this can do. Um, as you can see, I've got a nice Huggett shroud on this Wildcat. I really like this. It keeps it quiet, but looking really good and we are going to be using the sony rx100 to film the shot at a thousand frames a second which should be pretty interesting so let's do it kind of forgot where that gun was zeroed so i held the wrong way but we still hit the clay pretty well so it should turn out just fine so at 35 foot pounds you can see obviously significantly more uh, displacement of clay initially and I think the penetration is probably slightly more but let's measure it and see so you can see there the wound channel is significantly larger it's about four and a half uh, centimeters at its, at its widest point and in terms of length I'd say we're at about a 
actually pretty pretty comparable a little bit over 20 centimeters and there's our pellet so penetration didn't change too much but um the wound wound cavity is significantly bigger which means it dumped a bit more energy earlier on which is what you want for with small game hunting but we've only just started let's move on to the next gun so this next gun is one of my personal favorites uh, this is the fx dreamline in the grs stock absolutely probably the most ergonomic and good looking gun out of all of them um, and this one's set up to shoot fx hybrid slugs at about 40 foot pounds so still not pushing it really hard and this is about the lowest you'd really want to go with slugs i think but it's super quiet you get quite a few shots per fill so it's a really nice setup but you know now we're moving away from the pellets and, and, and towards the slugs and it'll be interesting to see what the hybrids can do at this speed um, at the block of clay so i'm just going to take a shot to make sure um, i'm zeroed here i should be and then we can get moving <laughs> don't know if you heard that sound but it sounded good so there's our slug opened up opened up amazingly and that is what you want from a small game hunting projectile now i must um just mention that it won't always look exactly the same as this on on animals i think you'd get significantly more pen penetration on animals and the slug won't quite open up so easily um however i know from experience the hybrids are great hunting slugs so take that for what it is so here's our wound cavity six centimeters more or less and length what is that um 10 centimeters so that's interesting that's about half of the penetration that we got from the pellets despite having more muzzle energy but as i said it's what happens in the first 10 centimeters that actually matters the most because most small game animals within 10 centimeters you enter the vitals and or into the brain cavity and that's where you want most of your damage to be done so really happy with this result so here's where we start taking things to another level and this is basically the whole purpose of making this video the impact m3 um this one has quite a few special aftermarket parts obviously all the you know bag riders and uh pick rails and arc rails and all that stuff but the things i really want to talk about is the prototype 800 millimeter barrel that's got a hein Frommann uh, barrel tensioning kit on it um you don't see fully how long this barrel is because i've got a big um aim sport reflex silence on here from it's actually made for a firearm and um i've also got some Sekmet. Uh, digital gauges on here that i got from ken hicks at, at southern precision air weapons i'm really enjoying these um you'll hear a bit more about these gauges in in some hunting videos where I actually where i talk about them in more detail but this gun is pushing out 90 91 foot pounds um and that's with 40 grain javelin slugs these are still prototypes so i don't know if you'll see the length of that not not currently available yet but we are producing them at the moment they should be available soon um but yeah 40 grain slugs at 1010 feet per second is not a joke and um, we're going to shoot one of these at the clay and then just for curiosity's sake we're going to take a hybrid slug and shoot it at, at like 1300 feet per second it'll definitely break the sound barrier and we'll do a quick comparison of like heavier slug at, lo at lower speeds versus lighter slug at high speeds 40 grain javelin at 1010 feet per second oh beautiful <laughs> that was hectic i think that's going to be the biggest wound cavity of the day by far maybe i'm wrong but you never know so that is what 91 foot pounds shooting a large hollow point with very soft lead does massive massive wound channel and this is where it gets interesting because you can see there, there's a piece of uh, slug that came off there. There's a piece right over there that came off. And then the main chunk continued on. And you can just, just make out in there that it's mushing quite nicely. So let's dig that out and take a look. So the wound cavity, eight and a half centimeters diameter. And there's that slug there. 20 centimeters so it's pretty much the best of both worlds you get that massive expansion initially as the sl as the slug um 
starts to break apart. I don't think, I mean, this, we're really close here. We're like 20 meters. I think at longer ranges, the slug would hold together much better. In fact, I know it would because I've shot animals at longer range and then actually dug the slug out and it's, it's held together perfectly and retained all its mass. But this clay really does a good job of getting inside that hollow point and, and um, causing that hydraulic expansion. So bits peeled off the slug and then that main chunk, that's probably 30 grains or maybe a bit under 30 grains, continued on and penetrated 20 centimeters. So you get the best of both and that is why I am shooting at this high power. And now you know why I find it hard to pick up even the Dreamline, even though it's such a beautiful gun and is so pleasant to shoot. When it comes to doing a pest control job, the impact is just at a different level right now. So, super cool. Are you ready for this? Yeah, me too. This should be fun. 1,300 feet per second with the FX hybrid slug. It's gonna get there so quickly, um, but will it be better than the 40 grain javelin? We'll see. Prepare for the crack. Release the kraken. <laughs> Moment of truth. Okay, there's a few interesting things to note about this wound cavity. Firstly, I think it's about the same, but possibly a bit smaller than the 40 grand we'll measure it in a moment but it's definitely about half the length this is maybe 10 centimeters probably less and i think the 40 grand ended up about here so if you were hunting anything that required good penetration don't use the hybrid it's not the way to do it um other thing to note is it held together fairly well um it kind of turned out the the middle then just became a little bit of a ring but there's little flecks of lead inside here everywhere. So it did break apart a fair bit. So I think the verdict on heavy versus light is if you're gonna be shooting at uh, very high power, you have to adjust the weight of, of whatever you're shooting. Firstly, to keep it subsonic, because um, obviously when you're hunting, you probably want it to be quiet, but also your sectional density improves as you go heavier and so does your ballistic coefficient which means that slug or pellet's going to maintain its momentum way better and it's going to carry a lot more energy downrange. So yes we're shooting this at 1300 feet per second but it, its velocity would drop very very quickly and if you're shooting at long range you'd end up losing a lot of energy whereas the javelin um, at 40 grains would not only have a much better ballistic coefficient but when it gets to the target at the distance it's going to hit much harder. Um, and penetrate deeper because you've got all that weight behind it that wants to keep forcing it forward even after the front is expanded. So with a hybrid, the whole thing is basically hollow. So there isn't really any lump of lead behind the slug when it opens up to keep it going. It's basically a meat parachute. Um, whereas the javelin, yes, the front opens up, but some of it will either peel off or open up, but you've got that big lump, lump of lead at the back that keeps it moving forward and that's what helps a lot. So diameter of expansion is about six and a half uh, centimeters and it went about nine centimeters deep. So that's the least penetration we've had out of everything. So faster doesn't necessarily mean better. I was very curious to know how this 40 grand javelin would perform at a longer distance because let's be honest, no one buys a setup like this to shoot at point blank. So the next day I actually went out and put another block of clay up at exactly 100 meters to compare the 100 meter results to the 20 meter results. Oh, perfect. It actually got there quickly as well. For 100 meters, that was very quick. Okay, so look. I wasn't necessarily expecting the slug to actually fragment into different pieces, but at 100 meters, the slug's still carrying a lot of energy. You can see the wound cavity significantly smaller than it was at 20 meters. However, there is uh -huh. still a significant cavity and the penetration ended up being about 20 to 25 centimeters. I'd say you could probably safely take a fairly large animal with the heart and lung shot, even at these extended distances. It's gone pretty deep. Right, so we'll clean this up and take a nice picture of it, but 
Um, at 100 meters, um, we still got some really good expansion with the 40 grain javelins. Um, you can see that they started expanding the moment they hit the clay. A wound chamber is probably four to five centimeters, so still really decent. And then penetration, I was quite impressed with. We found a couple fragments, and I think there's probably a few more fragments, but all of the fragments we found almost at the end of the block of clay. So that's like a good 25 centimeters in. So we actually got better penetration at 100 meters than we did at closer range. And then again, it's probably proving that um, the slug is expanding a little bit less at 100 meters, um, dumping slightly less energy at the beginning, and then traveling through nice and deep. But yep, it expanded probably to this, I'm guessing that's, nine millimeters diameter um, maybe slightly less um, but that's really good expansion and i'm really happy with that so this is going to be the most powerful air gun you're going to see in this video um hint hint there is something coming later um 100 and something foot pounds i think it's 105 foot pounds 42 grain slug at 1050 plus feet per second um this thing's an absolute monster. For those of you who don't know what this is, it's a PTE-320. I've done a couple hunting videos uh, with it. It's the most expensive air gun I own by far. Basically custom made in, in the Netherlands. Um, beautiful stock, a lot of titanium parts, the hammer and the valve and everything are on, on bearing. So everything's super smooth, but it's not regulated. And that's one of the main reasons I haven't done a lot of shooting with it. It's just not... Without the regulator and without a magazine, it's not very practical for hunting. You need to refill it like after three shots. So it's more of a bench rest gun and, and more of a toy, but it's awesome. So let's see what 101 foot pounds in 22 caliber does to a piece of clay. Uh, this is what I'm shooting, 42 grain slugs. You won't see them too well, but they're much harder than the 40 grain javelins and they don't have a hollow point. So I have a feeling the clay might deform this a bit, but I know for a fact that um, when shooting into animals and when shooting into water, they do not deform at all. So clay for some, for whatever reason, packs a bigger punch on whatever you're shooting at, but I know in the real world it, it won't do that, but maybe I'm totally wrong. It's just a guess that they're gonna expand a bit. Let's see. It didn't sound quite so hard as the thump from the the impact at uh, at 90 foot pounds. I think that's got to do with the fact that this is harder lead. Um, the javelins are pretty unique in that sense. It's very very soft lead, um, and there's a big hollow point. So I think that is making the difference. But I think this is going to penetrate pretty deep. So I would say that this is pretty similar to what the 40 grand javelin did. Um, same large entry wound, looks similar diameter and probably a similar distance as well penetration but you can see the slug here, it has actually mushroomed out a bit in the front and I know for a fact that that is not typically what these slugs would do when you're hunting an animal or even shooting into water. Um, clay is just so dense compared to human flesh. Just remember if you're shooting into like the lung cavity of an animal, you're going through tissue that's got a lot of air in it um, even that fur or feathers in an animal just helps to slow down that, that projectile just a little bit. And remember, we're shooting from close here. So in a real world hunting situation, I know for a fact these slugs would not um, expand like they are here. Maybe unless if they hit really hard bone. But um, I think that in a real life situation, you'd find a smaller um, wound cavity, but even more penetration, which is not necessarily a bad thing. If you're hunting... Let's say you, you're hunting a like a medium game animal. You want to take a headshot. You want good penetration. You don't want that 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 slug to um, mushroom out too much and and lose its energy too quickly. You want it to go through the brain and out the other side of the skull. Or even if you're taking a heart and lung shot on a on like a bush pig or something with with night vision, you have to be very careful not, to not use a projectile that's going to mushroom, dump all its energy on the on the um, ribs and then not go through the the vital so not not necessarily a bad thing but for me small game hollow points are the way to go 24 centimeters of penetration that's very good i think it'd be more if it didn't open up and that wound cavity is about eight and a half centimeters i can't remember exactly what the 
40 grand javelins were, but this is pretty impressive. And now for the great finale. This is kind of tradition in the past two clay ballistics videos. First on we did my 22 to 50. Second on we did my 260. We've now moved up to the big uh, 300 Winchester short magnum. It's a lot of uh, foot pounds of energy. Many, many, many hundreds of times more powerful than what you've just seen. Um, so let's just go for it, I guess. I can't put the scope cam on, otherwise I'm gonna get a, a camera flying into my eye. But let's see what we can do here to this block of clay. <laughs> that was a piece of clay flying right past my head. <laughs> Never gets old. Let's go take a look. Basically nothing left there. That's insane. <laughs> Look at this, eh? Absolutely nothing left. You'll remember with the, the 22250 in the first video, and actually with the 260, we managed to catch the bullet inside the, the oh. clay both times. 22250 only penetrated about this much. Um, 260 penetrated maybe two thirds of the way. 300, that's just too much energy. There's literally nothing left here. Just little tiny bits of lead everywhere, and clay stuck to the trees. Um, see what happened, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of force, look at that. It's probably bits of um, copper jacket flying off and, and pulling off some of this and a little piece there. But I'd say that's a great end to a video. Um, we'll do a quick analysis of all the slugs and how they look and then we'll call it a day. So I think in a final analysis, you'd probably say that things pretty much ended as expected with the projectiles carrying more energy downrange, making the most damage. I did find it particularly interesting to compare speed versus momentum with the 40 grand javelins and the 22 grand hybrids at the impact. But at the end of the day, I think one lesson I'll be taking home from today is that it's always good to just channel your inner kid and just enjoy your toys. Like Nicole in this clip, smashing a spring buck that she sculpted out of clay. Ooh. Can you see? <laughs> it's, like just, it's just two legs and a tail. <laughs> oh, shame. Oh, my word, look at the tree, it's hey? Terrible. Oh, no, look. Look at the tree. That, that pellet. Oh, that slug came through here. And just kept on going. Well, that's where we're going to bring it to an end. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed bringing out my inner kid and and having fun with all my toys. <laughs> and I also hope you learn something. There's always something to learn from just experimenting and, and being stupid. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and push that notification bell. I get a ton of people asking me why I haven't uploaded in months and I keep saying to them, I actually, actually upload every two weeks. So clearly there's something wrong with, with my subscription notifications that are going to people, but, um, Keep well, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.